To need God is a human being's highest perfection. A cow suffers when it is not milked at the proper time. Therefore, one's best method, if external conditions are of no help, is, like the cow, to milk oneself. The greater perfection a being aspires after, the more dependent it is upon transparent grace. The surest and quickest way to the deep place is to set your heart to love God and love others. Although we live physically here on earth, our true life and love are with God in the deep place. Loving and being loved is what matters most in life. Get to know God's love personally and rely on the love that God has for you. Whatever your deepest self loves most reveals whether your essential reality is living or dying. Live in love and God's love will live in you. Devotional singularity is probably the hardest concept on this, on this chart to understand, but I think it's an important one. It's a religious practice that helps you become aware of people by practicing devotionally a specific religion, Hinduism, Buddhism, Jewish, Judaism, Christianity, Islam, or something else. Whatever your choice for religious practice, devotional singularity means practicing those symbols real symbols that, that help you constantly, every day, every week, every year, every rest of your life, until you change your religious practice. It, it's a devotion, a devotional practice. So good religion is a devotional practice. It's something you have constructed or participated in constructing or living with the help of something that's been constructed in a disciplined, devotional fashion over periods of time weekly, daily, monthly, yearly, uh, so forth. You know, this God talk, and especially this religion stuff, really bothers me. Can't we use some different language? We certainly can. And in many cases, we definitely need to use some different language. But keep in mind that in this journey of real life, we're only talking about how we human beings relate to reality and personally manage consciousness. If we throw out all the old poetry humankind has used for doing these things, we lose touch with the wisdom of hundreds of generations who have gone before us. Why start all over when this wisdom can assist in guiding us even now? It still bothers me. Maybe you need to lighten up, get out of your head, and just play a little bit. Think about the great wisdom traditions as the library for all human understanding of the deep place and the practice of authentic living. Let's continue. The person who trusts reality is one who intentionally places oneself before those symbols which will break their illusions because they know they can never break their own illusions. Now in the very middle there is, I had to put down here at the bottom, the practice of visionary trance. You see that down there at the bottom? That's talking about a practice of religion that relates to the enchantment with being or love of reality as a whole. And this is a hard one to, uh, to communicate because it's the most weird sounding to, to modern people like us. But it wasn't weird in the history of humanity. The shaman of ancient, ancient times took people on quests on vision journeys, like they went out of their minds. Sometimes they used drugs to get there. Uh, some of them used intentional drumming until you just, or dancing, until you just went someplace, you know, into another space uh, and came back again. Or this appeared in the holy rollers and shakers and quakers of Christian tradition, uh, that you just found this out of your mind, states uh, that came into being as a practice, which uh, allowed you to get out of your mind, basically, <laughs> into uh, something deeper, and not just be yeah, locked into uh, blinders with life. There are things you do probably have done 
if these sound a little weird, that are also visionary trance practices, like laughter. Sometimes just having a laugh face, face and there's, there is a practice where you lay on each other's stomachs and go haw haw and haw haw until finally everybody is haw hawing so that it's just an outlandish outside your mind experience of just being in a laughter fest. Probably some of you have done something like this. Or a song fest. Also sometimes do this. You have to sung about the third black spiritual, or you might go someplace, you know, and into a genuine uh, musical trance and come back again to your life uh, in a, in a more accident prone for enchantment with being. <laughs> you get that feeling. Another thing is, is chants. Some of these ancient Hindu chants uh, were just unbelievably uh, trance uh, performing. Just a religious retreat can be a kind of visionary trance experience as a whole, because you get away from life for three days, four days, five days, six days. When you go back, you know you've been somewhere. There's an re-entry re -entry problem. <laughs> Sometimes good leaders prepare you for re-entry, making it clear to you, you, you've been in trance space here for six days. You're going home again to the same old stuff you were, but you're not the same person you were, and you should expect uh, some re-entry quick struggle as you leave the retreat and go back to your normal life. So all those are illustrations of the practice of visionary trance. The prophets say that the true worship of God is feeding the hungry, taking care of the widow and orphan. The gift we receive in the liturgy isn't complete until we, in turn, give it away. That's the worship of God. God is worshipped not by moods, but by action. Resting in God as the term of Lexio Divina, one is no longer doing anything except resting in the fruit of the labors we've been through or of the other acts we exercise in reading, responding, and reflecting. And now there's nothing more to do because we've said all we want to say, so what do you do? Nothing but just rest. But your attentiveness has become spiritual, so you're not doing a particular thing, but in a sense you're doing everything, or at least a comprehensive uh, surrender to reality that is sustained by the memory or the attitude of enjoyment or appreciation or gratitude or surrender or adoration or thanksgiving of the mystery or the uh, aspects of the mystery that have captured your heart. And so resting always involves the, the movement of the heart mm. to love God. And, and love is not exhausting. It gets energy by exercising it. Mm not by particular acts, but by receiving it above all. And so uh, silence then of its nature moves towards this kind of rest, hmm. which is not doing nothing, but is receiving, which may feel like nothing, but which is the most important of all activities when one is receiving God. True love is surrender. The more we love, the more we surrender. I am arriving at a new place in my head and my heart regarding the ultimate love I now choose to practice. I grasp the truth of the reality of mystery and the mystery of reality. I am being delivered into a deeper relationship with every element of my real everyday life, a new authenticity. I'm filled with a gratitude bigger than can be contained in my small human heart, an enchantment with being. 
I'm ready to undertake and practice the ultimate journey.